Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Post Edit. Now, in today's episode, we are going to be talking about microphones. So that the different types of mics there are, how they are used, where they are used, and just what the difference is between one and the other is. All right, so the first mic we're gonna be talking about is what's called a dynamic mic. This one here is called a Shure SM58, also known as the hammer mic. If you've been to a rock concert or any sort of public speaking, you've probably seen one of these. In fact, your school is most likely to have these types of mics, even if they don't have anything else. They're relatively inexpensive, really robust, and they're really versatile. You can use these to mic pretty much anything from vocals to instruments to anything. So if you're gonna pick up a mic, this should be the first mic you buy. Now the other uh, good thing about them is that they are really, really good with feedback, which is this sound. And this makes them convenient both for studio as well as outdoor use, uh, because you can push the gain and the volume really high with the signal still being usable. Alrighty, so the next mic we're going to be talking about is called a large diaphragm condenser. And this one's actually a Neumann TLM-103. Now, the difference between this and the dynamic mic is that, for one, these tend to cost generally a lot more than their dynamic counterparts. Reason being is that they are much more sensitive, which means they are great for studio recording and not much else. Uh, you can use them on anything from vocals to instrument micing to even gathering room tone. And these ones actually tend to have a variable pickup pattern, but we'll talk about that a little later. The reason that they're not much good for, let's say, a live recording is because they are so susceptible to feedback and to things like wind, or it's even, you know, if you stomp a little hard on the ground, these will pick it up. So if there's any sort of movement around, no good. The other thing to keep in mind with them is that they take something called phantom power, which most, uh, well, pretty much all sound equipment today has. Um, it just means that they take extra power from the board. Uh, like I said, if you're recording into a board, it's not something you have to uh, worry about as long as you, know, you make sure that the switch is flipped. But if you're recording into a camera or something like a laptop or some more amateur setup, it's something to keep in mind. All right, now these mics are what are known as either shotgun mics or small diaphragm condensers. And the main difference between this one and the one that we just talked about is basically the pickup pattern. Large diaphragm condensers have a really wide pickup pattern, which means that they pick up everything around you and they're really, really sensitive. These mics are just as sensitive, but their pickup pattern is really narrow, which means that you can stay outside of your shot and still get great sound. This is actually the kind of mic that you'd see film crews, newscasters, pretty much any EFP production use. And the reason being is because, you know, you have a really sensitive mic but with a narrow pickup pattern, it means that you can stand farther away and stay out of shot and still get the sound that you're looking for and not have to do ADR or deal with anything like that. You're not picking up the room tone or any of the background noise with these. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that, like the other condensers, these work off of phantom power as well, but they generally tend to have a, a small battery inside them and with an on and off switch. So make sure that's on before you start recording. All right, so last but not least, these are what we call labs or lapel mics. And as you can see, they're really convenient because of their small size. They're really easy to hide. You can either you know, stick them on your shirt, in your lapel, or in your tie. And you generally see these in either newsrooms, on talk shows, anywhere where it's a controlled environment. And there's not a lot of actions. The problem with these is that the mics, they're really, really sensitive. So they will pick up anything from you, just a slight rub against your clothes, or even the cable itself rubbing against something. And then your audio is no good. Uh, the good thing about them is that, you know, you can easily conceal them and they get you pretty good audio of your actor. Another thing to keep in mind is that these things come with a transmitter like this. Uh, they tend to be wireless at this point, so you know you do have a bit of range of movement. But uh, if you are going to move around, plan out what you're going to do. Make sure that you know you're not coming in contact with the mic or the cable. Um, otherwise, you're going to run into a lot of headaches in post. And always make sure you have extra batteries. <laughs> 